Yesterday, we explained Nimi Maharaj's question and one one Rishi, now Yogindra, answered. In brief, the first question was, what? First question? Oh. What is Bhagavad Dharma? <coughs> By hearing that, our endless pain of endless birth dates, all suffering, Old is coming, going, and so much suffering in this world coming will be stopped forever. And we will be happy. And transcendental Krishna Prem can be attained. Attain. And 
especially he told the process of that bhakti is first to surrender himself in the lotus feet of Guru, Diksha, and learning all kinds of Krishna Tattva, Jiva Tattva, Maya Tattva, everything from him, serving him always. Tadviddhi Paripati in a Pariparashni in a Seva. Then Upade Chantiti Gyanam Gyanina Tattva Darshina. Then they kindly tell all these things to you, by which your bhakti will increase. Especially we have forgotten Krishna. And that is why we are coming, going in this world. So many sufferings coming. But still we don't want to serve Krishna. So, Guru is very powerful. He is representative of Krishna. If he will take his shelter, then very soon, by his services, you can attend this high class of work. This is the purport of first. And, and then second question, how, what is the symptom of Bhagavad Bhakta. How we can recognize that he is the best Bhakta among all Bhakta? And then, second, Kabi, Habi, then Habi began to answer that there are three kinds of Vaishnava. Uttam, Madhyam and Kalishta. And he told Uttam Bhagavat like Prahlad Maharaj. He, see, he will see his worshipful deity and his mood in his worshipable, uh, in the heart of all. And in Krishna he will see all living entity, all world. And giving respect to all, then he is Uttam Bhagavan. And then, Premumati Kripa Paksha Jaha Karo Samadhyama. Not Apeksha, Upeksha. Upeksha. To Krishna Prem and the Maitri with Vaishnava, three kinds. Those who are Uttam, superior than me, than us, than Seva Yukta, Seva Yukta Maitri, honoring him. Those who are equal, O oh, Maitri, like friend, and those who are some junior but nearer, they should be like six side. And then, who are ignorant, but not mayabadi, especially not mayabadi, nirvisheshbadi, to whom kripa, kindness, he gives them his association till harikatha tells, and thus he makes them madhyam and uh, madhyam to uttam bhavi. And those who worship deities, and they honor only their Gurudev, but not giving honor to other Vaishnavas and also to others. They don't respect them. Then he is Kanishta. So we should know all these things and properly we should behave. Vaishnav, Kanishta, Madhyam and And a special kind of Uttam Bhakta, Vaishnava Churamani among them. You should know that even whole world, whole world's affluence or wealth coming or going, they don't be worried or so happy. 
Always <coughs> no worldly detach. Detach from the world. Samadarsi equal to all, but a special honor to Vaishnava. Oh, he is Uttam Bhagavat among them. And those, for a moment, he is not disremembering, forgetting Krishna, for a moment, like a madhu, like unbroken steam of honey, always remembering Krishna. And he has Binded Krishna in his heart with the rope of love and affection. Pranay Rasna. Oh, this is most supreme high class of Vaishnava. By these symptoms, really you can know and give them honor proper. If you are neglecting Uttam Vaishnava or Madhyam Vaishnava and giving respect to those who are foolish, having no quality, and tell him, oh, I am first class Uttam Mahabhagavata. Then you are cheated. So you must know all these things and give proper respect to Vaishnava and proper Upeksha to others. This is second. Now, King became very happy and told, oh Prabhu, I want to know what is Maya by which whole world <coughs> are covered and they are taking birth after birth hmm? so many species of life I know, want to know Nemi Maharaj Nemi Maharaj is asking and Nemi Maharaj is asking <laughs> Jnana Timirandasya, Jnana Anjana Shlakaya, Chakshul Militangena, Tasmai Shri Gurve. Mam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Saminiti Namane. Mam Vishnu Padaya, Radhikaya Priyatmane, Shri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta, Narayaniti Namane. Vansha Kalpaturubhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Bevacha, Putitanam Bhavane Pyo, Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha. I have my humble obeisances of the Lord to speak to my beloved Diksha Guru, Nitya Leda Pramishta Shishi Ma Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada. I have the Lord to speak to my beloved Shiksha and Sanyas Guru, Rupa Nudavara Shishi Ma Bhakti Vedanta Narango Swami Maharaj. I have the Lord to speak to my beloved Shiksha forget to tell for a moment <laughs> that if anyone will follow this Bhagavad Dharma, Sharanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Esmaranam, all these things, then if he will run very fast, closing eyes, even he will not fall down or derailed. What is the meaning? I told in morning that Vaidhi Bhakti is very slowly going in Bhakti Bhakti, very carefully looking, but even there is chance to be delayed, not safe. And Raganuga Bhakti, rapid running in force, closing their eyes. What means? If in Raganuga Bhakti, first running, if he neglects some 
limbs of bhakti it has no heart like the example has been given एवं व्रताश्व नाम जातागो चुप्त उच्च हसत्त थो रोदति रोती गायत उन्माद्यत लोक बाह्य वट इज डूइंग ओ हि बकम्स मैट चैंटिंग द नेम ऑफ कृष्ण एंड सिंगिंग द स्वीट पास टाइम्स ऑफ कृष्ण and become totally mad becomes totally mad das hmm? <coughs> subhadrani rathang pane janmani kan mari cha jani loke jani namani tava thagani jani bilaj jo vichare na samjha he becomes sandesh in the street even hmm? oh krishna where you are laughing sometimes sometimes weeping Sometimes, oh, become so silent. If he sees Krishna here, embracing him, oh. so if anyone is going on the Raganuga path, running fast, closing eyes, that is neglecting some limbs of bhakti bhakti, no harm, because he is totally mad. <laughs> when he will eh? when he will remember all these things by the bhakti like haridas thakur one krishna name always and he neglected others but he used to hear from chaitanya mahaprabhu shankar so in this way one is by the bhakti slowly going closing eyes bhair carefully and you you know khurasya dhara nishita duratya world a like very sharp soul when what calamity danger or suffering will come anyone does not know any time your death may come so at once go to gurudev surrender and serve him and Oh, learn all these. So this is the meaning now. Now, I offer also offer my obeisances to to Dandigal, my senior god brothers, god sisters, and all Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, Hare Krishna. So, Sri <coughs> Guru Dev has explained that Nimi, not Nimi, Nimi Maharaj, he's asking the Navi Gendras. So Hari Kavi, they've explained that Sri Guru Dev has. Just now summarize. Now, uh, Nimi Maharaj is asking about material energy and Shri Antariksha Rishi. He is giving explanation. So in his explanation, there are two aspects. One is he's describing how the living entities, conditioned living entities, become bewildered by the material energy. They engage in material activities due to false identification. The suffering, or thinking that I'm this body, suffering, uh, birth and death. repeatedly and thinking that they're happy and repeatedly going through actual uh, distress so called happiness and distress but actually all distress this is first aspect uh so it's explaining that the living entity identifies himself with the body just like when should be asked he saw in trance uh, atmanam chigunatmakam the living entity is conscious spirit soul but some her other by the influence of the material body is thinking that i whom seeing matter am actually matter it's completely irrational this is the influence of the uh, material material energy so this is false ego sometimes we think that false ego means is very puffed up this is just one aspect of false ego false ego means ego identification false identification so what is this false identification Krishna himself is explained in Shrimad Bhagavatam when all the sages appeared at Kurukshetra. Yasyat no budhi kana peche tak that okay. Sadhi kala tradishu bau me jidi yasyat yat tirta budhi shalile kahi jit janesh vigeshu sahi vigokara. If I think that I'm I'm actually this body 
which is actually composed, as Gurudev has explained, stool, urine, latrine, and all nasty things, then this is a mistake, big mistake. Or, if I think that actually I'm a member of my family, I belong to innumerable families, human families, dog families, cat families, whale families, jellyfish families, all sorts, all sorts of families. So this present family is not my family. But I'm thinking I'm a part, I have to do what my children say, what my mother says, what my father says, what my husband, what my wife says, and I don't have time to serve Krishna. This is also false identity. Then I'm Russian, I'm English, I'm, we identify with our country, our community, American, French, whatever. So we have our own particular ways of doing things, I've got my duties to my country. This is also false identification. And then falsely identi identifying with our religious beliefs. Going, for example, to place of pilgrimage, and simply performing rituals, ritual bath, instead of hearing from the pure devotee who's sitting uh, and ready to give harikata. Just like when we go to Nidraghat, previously with Srila Gurudev. So, on the bank of Ganga, thousands of the pilgrims, they all jump into Ganga for bath. And Srila Gurudev is sitting with the deities, he's saying, now we shall see who wants to take bath in the nectar of Ganga, and who wants to take bath in the nectar of harikata. So, this is also false identification. Then how we can become free. So, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's explained in Jaiva Dharma that the way to become free from this is only by association identifying with pure devotee. Just like Srila Gurudev, he said, what is your identity? Actually, we don't know. We can say spirit soul. What is spirit soul? We don't know. At least I don't know. Uh, but what do we know? What are we acting as? Acting as servant, disciple of Guru. This is our identity. So, Thakur Bhakti, you know, he explains this four moods in relation to the pure devotee. Atma buddhi, Jata buddhi, uh, Ichi buddhi, and Tit buddhi. That if we think Atma buddhi, the pure devotee, is dearer than my life. Atma, actually, Guru Devat Atma, he's my life and soul, actually. Jata buddhi, that my family is Guru Dev and his family of devotees. Ijibudi, that my life energy belongs to Gurudev, not to my country. I want to die for Gurudev, not to die for... Uh, yes, George Bush in his, in his righteous struggle for the oil fields. <laughs> and Tirtabudhi, that, that Gurudev is a place of pilgrimage. So if we adopt this relationship, we develop practice and develop this relationship to pure devotee, then we can become free from these four modes of false identification, otherwise not. Then second aspect of Sri uh instruction, it's how the material energy becomes unmanifest. So, Sri Kapiladev. Sri Kapiladev has explained how the material energy appears. At first sight, it seems like a kind of mythological gobbledygook from the Western point of view. But actually, this Sankhya philosophy is the most consistent and self-consistent uh, explanation of our situation in the material world, anywhere. The material scientists are hopelessly confused. They neglect consciousness, and then they are like ritualizing our identity with the material nature. They're telling us we're just brain waves, basically. Just waves in the brain. So, Kapila Dev explains that, uh, first of all, is Pradhan, and then by influence of time comes Mahatattva, and then false ego in three modes, ignorance, passion, and goodness. So after the mode of, pa uh, after the mode of ignorance, first comes sound. So at least the scientists got that right, Big Bang Theory. So first there's sound, and then sound, sound is a subtle form of space. So the Vedic explanation is very simple. They're looking what are the essential elements of experience. Material scientists are supposed to be doing that, but they don't do it. So, in the essential, as, uh, essential aspects of experience, solid, liquid, energy, movement, and accommodation, space. If you look around, that's all you can see. Everything else is details of these five. These are the elements of what we experience. But then we have to think, but actually we, what we see, we see form, touch, taste, smell, these are also elements. But then we need the sense, uh, uh, sense uh, the senses to perceive these things. So these are five more ele elements. And then the active senses. And then there's the subtle elements, uh, mind, intelligence, false ego, chitta, like this. 
very, very completely, perfectly self-consistent. So, the uh, Kapila Dave describes the gradual appearance, first of all sound, then space. Then space transforms through the influence of time into motion, which is wind, uh, air. And then that transforms into fire, which is energy. Then that transforms into water with the subtle element of taste. And then that transforms into earth with the subtle element of smell. So now, and then uh, the senses of, of the living entities are activated, and then we identify with the sense of objects, and off we go for another creation until we meet with the pure devotee. So now, Antariksha, Antariksha Rishi, he's explaining the winding down. So he says that earth. First of all, there's a great fire comes. No, first of all, there's rain. There's raindrops. I don't know if they're as wide as elephants' trunks or if they're as long as elephants' trunks. But anyway, the big raindrops. And that goes for a hundred years. And there's a fire. Huh? Drought. Okay. Drought for a hundred years, then rain. A fire comes from the mouth of? Sankarshan. Sankarshan. And then a great wind. This is not ordinary wind. This wind is robbing the elements, <clears throat> robbing the gross elements of their subtle elements. So it takes the smell out of earth, and earth collapses back into water. It takes the taste out of water, water collapses back into fire. It takes the form and light out of fire, and fire collapses back into air. And then it takes the motion out of air, air collapses back into space, and then space collapses also. And then the Mahatat also collapses, all unmanifest. So this is our timetable. Unless we actually follow the instructions of the pure devotee, we, not only birth after birth after birth, but creation after creation after creation, bhutva bhutva praliyate, repeatedly taking birth, becoming manifest, and again becoming destroyed. So this is the uh, explanation of uh, Sri Antariksha's explanation about material energy. Hare Krishna. <laughs> The purpose of his explanation is that what is Maya? By words we cannot explain, but by the activities of Maya we can know something. This Maya, what a power of Krishna, by which. We have forgotten us and thinking that this body is me and related to this body is mine. By which power of Krishna we think like so, it is Maya. Also, though who, who is here in the form of Antaryami Purush, Paramatma, and he knows everything, and he himself watching only, looking, and jivas are hard doing. They are the hatma buddhi. They enjoy the fruits of their karmas. This is Maya, by which we are always in jerked in our soul, gross and subtle body. This is Maya. By which power we are controlled and do subh and asubh karma, auspicious and inauspicious karma. And we take birth and death and for whole life, our whole time creation, we are going and coming and thus suffering. Oh, that is Maya. And by which Mahapralaya that he explained is done, oh, she is Maya. Very duraktaya, difficult. Only those who are uh, Mam Maya Duraktaya Mam Eva Je Prapadyante Mayam Eta Only those who will take shelter of Guru Vaishnav and serve Krishna and full surrender to Krishna, only they can oh, cross that 
endless maya. And then he is asking Nevi Maharaj, Oh, very satisfied, I am very satisfied by your answer. Now I want to know, this maya is diff very difficult to cross, very difficult. But how we can very easily overcome by this maya, you? <coughs> Srila Gurudev has ordered me to discuss the next question and answer of Nimi Maharaj to the nine Yogendras. So far we've heard the answer first of Kavi and then Havir and then Antariksha. This is now will be answered by Prabuddha who is the fourth of the nine Yogendras. Antariksha, when he was finishing his completion of the illusory energy, he said, now I've summed up the description of the illusory energy, what more do you want to hear? So Nimi Maharaj was very pleased and he again asked, please explain how even a foolish person a foolish materialistic person can transcend and cross over the illusory energy which is very very difficult to overcome unless one is self-controlled so now Prabhuda is replying he agrees that it's very difficult to overcome for one who is not self-controlled and he explains the workings and the illusion. He said, accepting the roles of male and female, human beings, in fact all living entities, engage in sex life, thinking that by this process their misery will come to an end and they'll enjoy unlimited happiness. But actually, the opposite comes to pass. All their happiness disappears and their misery increases again and again and further and further. Then he talks about wealth. Everyone is working so hard for wealth. And Srila Gurudev often quotes this verse. Nityartha dena vitena dola atma mrityuna grihaptaptasya pasubi Wealth is the perpetual source of distress. In fact, it is virtual death for the soul. What satisfaction can one acquire by his attainment of his hard-earned wealth? Similarly, how can one gain any permanent happiness by his home, his family or his uh, household animals which are maintained by this hard-earned wealth. There's no happiness there. Then he continues to explain that anywhere in the material world there's no happiness. One cannot find happiness even on the heavenly planets where the demigods reside. Even in heaven the living entity is subject to rivalry of other demigods and those who are superior to him. There's still envy, and envy is a cause of great pain. Since the residence if in, the head, in the heavenly planets is exhausted after some time, his pious activities, as Gurudev said, 
everyone is enjoying and suffering the results of their pious activities and impious activities, sometimes going to heaven, and when those pious activities are used up, then they go to hell. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave a very nice analogy in his teachings to Srila Sanatam Goswami. In, the, um, in ancient India there was a way of punishment for the culprits. They would be taken to the middle of the river on a boat and then they would be dumped under the water and just before they would die they would be picked up by their hair and they would get one breath. Oh, please don't put me under that water again. I promise I won't do anything bad. And just as soon as they get their breath, again under the water, up and down. So sometimes the living entity is in the heavenly planets, and sometimes, just like a Ferris wheel, he's sometimes in the hellish planets. These demigods resemble kings who, although they're worshipped, by those citizens who think that the king is living in the lap of luxury and is very happy. Those kings are always oppressed by rival kings who are envious of them. And they're always uh, trying to control and trying against the will of destiny, of their own destiny, to maintain power, to maintain prestige. So even those in the most powerful positions are always suffering and afraid of losing their positions, always envious of others, always angry, always conniving and manipulating, and in this way they feel all kinds of pain. So what is the way out? These are the foolish people. And the question by Nimi Maharaj is how can even the foolish materialist cross over the insurmountable, illusory energy, which is not possible to be free from for one who is not self-controlled. So here, Prabhuda, Sage Prabhuda, is first explaining the various kinds of persons who are not self-controlled, and now he's giving the way out. And you'll all recognize this very, very popular and very important verse coming up. Tasmad gurum prabad yetvat jigyasu sreya utamam shabde pare chanisnatyam brahmani upasamashrayam. Therefore, considering the very miserable condition in all species of life and the waste of time in trying to be happy, and the more we make arrangements to be happy, the more miserable we become. Therefore, a person who seriously desires happiness, not there's two kinds of happiness, Shreyas and Preyas. One who wants Shreya Uttama, the highest real happiness. Our Srila Prabhupada gives an analogy of Preyas and Shreyas. Preyas means temporary false happiness, just like a baby. A baby will be crawling. And a baby, as many of you know, has no sense of discrimination. The baby in crawling will see an open safety pin and think, oh yes, this is for my eating. It's so shiny. And then he'll put it in his mouth and become full of misery and pain and blood. Whereas an adult He'll discriminate. This is for my eating and this is not for my eating. This will be bad for me and this will be good for me. I was once on a morning walk with our Srila Prabhupada in 1969 in Boston and there was a pigeon eating vomit in the street. So he said he has no discrimination and most everybody has no discrimination. A human being has to discriminate what they eat and what they don't. And similarly, one who wants real happiness has to discriminate what is good for me and what is not good for me. So what does he do to find out? One who seriously desires real happiness must seek out a bona fide spiritual master and inquire from him and accept initiation from him. 
The qualification for the bona fide guru is that he must have realized all the scriptures, not only knowing them, quoting so many verses one after another, or even explaining their meaning, but he has to have realized these verses, which he has done either by his natural identity from descending from the spiritual world as an associate of the Lord, or he became like that as a sudden siddha by having full faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his own spiritual master who thus revealed to him all the Vedic literatures. So one who has uh, become spiritual master by fully surrendering to his own guru or one who has descended from the kingdom of God and is now acting as a spiritual master acting in the Majjhima capacity of making distinctions between a person who is uh, qualified to receive instructions, a person who is to be neglected, in that way. He takes shelter of that bona fide spiritual master who has realized all the conclusions of scriptures and because of his realizations he's fully detached. Brahmani Upasamashrayam he has no material desires and no material anxieties. And he knows all scriptures, he's detached, and he has full realization of the Supreme Lord. That is, minimum, he would be in, in order to be able to give that highest benefit, minimum, he would be engaged in at least having visions of the Lord as a person in Bhava Bhakti, as a Madhyam Uttam. And then, even that Madhyam Uttam would turn his disciple over to an Uttama Mahabhagwat once he knows such a person is present. And that person can actually give the highest Prema Bhakti. Jai Gurudev! So then, Prabhuda, Sage Prabhuda, continues to explain how the disciple should act in relation to his self-realized spiritual master. <laughs> Accepting his spiritual master as his life and soul and worshipable deity, as the verse quoted yesterday, Bhaktyaika Jai Sang Guru Deva Tatma, the disciple who wants to be free from all fear and all sense of duality, and freedom from seeing anything outside of its relationship with Krishna. He accepts the bona fide spiritual master as his worshipable deity and as his very life and is more intimate than his own soul. So he explains he should be very uh, clean and tolerant and engage in the service of his spiritual master studying the Vedas under the direction of the spiritual master. And in this way, uh, even a person who's in gross ignorance can be freed from the illusory energy by the influence of that spiritual master who is more intimate than his own soul. I'll end here, but I wanted to mention one thing, one small thing that happened in Australia a few years ago. Srila Gurudev was giving lectures on this verse that was quoted yesterday by Amruti Abhinivesi Tasyad, that one should see the spiritual master as more intimate than his own Atma. So the next morning I asked him, uh, you say that we should see the spiritual master as closer to us than our own soul, but I don't see that way. Whenever I see you, I'm always fearful and I feel guilty that I'm not serving you properly. So Gurudev said, yes, that's why I gave that class. So you should know that there's no separation any more than there is separation between fire and its heat. Just like there's no separation between Krishna and the gopis, and yet they're always feeling separation. Similarly, there's no real separation of the guru and the disciple. So when Gurudev walks in, the disciple who recognizes this doesn't see, oh, Gurudev is talking to that person and smiling at that person. Why isn't he talking and smiling and appreciating me? 
Rather, he thinks, oh, my heart has just come into the room. My soul has just come into the room. And now he's speaking with this person and that person. And thus, that disciple becomes happy, increasingly happy. Thank you. Very good. You explained very well. But here, the purport of this slow, <coughs> this is question, how easily we can cross this Duratya Maya? And then he told me, everywhere in Srimad Bhagavatam and all Shastra, Tashmat Guru Mahaprabhu. So, Guru Nishtha is the backbone of Bhagavatam. If no Guru Nishtha, anyone cannot have real bhakti. So bottle like bhakti, we can have. So must be high class of Guru Nishtha. Obey him. Even we can give up our life for Guru service. In Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhan Sarsati Guru if for my Guru Seva, I will go to hell for whole life and jan and jan. Krishna cannot do you. He knows, he does not know that you are suffering or what. But in coronation, the Guru, his associates knows. But we don't recognize him. Even, even his Madhya Matika, you know how, try to please him, don't do anything against him. If he will criticize his associates, himself, then what will be? You will go down. Don't criticize in any, in any occasion, never and never. If he is doing wrong, even you are not his guardian, eh? guardian authority. Guru may do tell us. In this way, we should accept a guru and obey him and give your life to please him. If he is not happy, you should not do that. If Guru wants, then even by giving life, we should try to do this. All living entity, himself, and in combined effort, they want happiness. But they never. Instead of happiness, only sorrow, suffering, problems coming. That is why go to Gurudev and be surrendered there. And then be initiated properly and then learn the septum of bhakti, process of bhakti. And then give up all attachment, worldly attachment. If you are doing bhakti, getting so many classes, high class of Rashlila and others, don't buy the bhakti. Even they cannot save you. Only Guru can save. So we should give up all our attachment. Always Harikatha in Sadhu Sangha. And what he told by second question that and Brahmacharya, very simple not giving any pen to any beings. Uh, and in all living entity, seeing your worshipable deity, Krishna, and those who are Bhakti Shastra, you should have very um, nishtha, honor them. But don't criticize Anya Shastra. They are also, anyhow, far away. 
they are telling the same bhakti indirectly. And you should keep control on your indriya, especially your tongue. Tongue is different of evil of all evil roots. And sarvapari, among all, you should always hear the very powerful, wonderful, sweet pastimes of Krishna and preach this to others. And what you have, give up to Krishna. <coughs> this is the purpose of that. Then, he asks fifth question, what is the Swarupa of Narayan, a supreme personality? Yeah. You do mel Australian melody. <laughs> Melville sing with him and female with their party. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna.
Maharaj became satisfied and very happy. And then he asked, Please tell me, who is that Narayan or Bhagavan to whom we have to do bhakti? Who is he? What is Brahma Tattva like or Supreme Personality of Godhead? He is Tattva. Please tell me. Madhav Maharaj Vishwati. No? Then you? Why you cannot? <laughs> Guruve Gavachanda Radhika Tadale Krishna Krishna Bhakta Tadavate Namo Namaha. So, first they offer pranams, the lotus feet of Gurudev, on Vishnu Pad, Sishimad Bhaktivedanta Rayan Goswami Maharaj, Sanyasis, Vaishnavis, Vaishnavas. So, we're very fortunate to hear the beginning of the 11th canto. It's described these 12 candles of Bhagavatam is Krishna's Suru. So this, the tenth candle is Krishna's face. The five chapters dealing with Raslila is Krishna's smile. The eleventh candle is the head, means the brain of Krishna, <coughs> figuratively speaking. Because there, after giving instructions, how to this, after fixing the goal in the tenth candle, the eleventh candle gives the process of sudden bhakti. So already this is the fifth question asked by Maharaj Nimi to the Navayogendras, the sons of Bhagawan. Rishabh Dev. So you think carefully what we've heard so far. What is Bhagavad Dharma? What is Bhakti Tattva? What is Maya Tattva? What is Bhakta Tattva? And now we're hearing what is Bhagavad Tattva. What is the Surup of Narayan? Therefore, <clears throat> Nimi Maharaj, he asked, please tell me if you think I'm qualified to understand. What is the Surup of the Supreme Lord? Sri Narayan. So the Navi Ogendras, which one was it? <laughs> said, even though Bhagavan is present in the creation, maintenance and dissolution of the universe, still he has no cause himself. Even though he is the cause of all causes, and all effect which we see in this world is nothing else but him, still he maintains a separate existence outside of everything. Just like in Chatur Shlok Bhagavatam, see, Narayan gave that inspiration to Brahma. Aham eva saga eva gri nani yat sada satparam tapasar tari tacha yo viseto so asmi aham. O Brahmaji, what you see before the creation there was only me. What you see now, this creation is nothing else but me. And after this creation is dissolved, only I exist. Therefore Bhagavatam gives the example like a spider. That spider web comes from no one else but him. But before the spider web, the spider was there. That spider web comes from the spider. And after the spider web is dissolved back into the spider, only the spider exists. Therefore the Supreme Lord, he is both the cause and the effect of everything in creation, material and spiritual, but still he maintains a separate creation, a separate existence outside of cause and effect. Therefore it is he only which pervades everything. So this 11th canto is a very wonderful explanation of Advaita Gyan Tattva. How nothing is separate from Krishna. Just like in the waking state, the dream state, and the state of deep sleep. This, everything else, the Supreme Lord enters all senses, and everything which is perceived is nothing else but an expansion of Him. For example, Nimi Maharaj was explaining this by which we acquire knowledge. Who gives the power for those senses to work? Nothing else but the Paramatma himself. These senses themselves are created by Bhagavan's and Mambahiranga Shakti, his Maya Shakti. Therefore Bhagavan himself is creating the senses. He's giving direct inspiration for the senses to work through perception. But he himself, is not, even though nothing else is being perceived except him, still he maintains separateness from everything. This is the Surup of Bhagavan. In simple words, Nothing is separate from him, but still he maintains a separate existence from everything. Yes. 
Therefore, but do not think because these senses come from Sri Narayan that he can be perceived by sense perception. This is not true. Just like it's not necessary, just like a spark when it goes back into the fire is not better for the fire anyway. In the same way, even though sense perception comes from him, still the sense of the living entity cannot in any way transform his sarup, nor can he be understood by direct sense perception. What to speak of Bhagawan not being able to be described or realized by the senses? Sri Goswami says, Atasi Krishna Namadi Nabhava Graham Indriya Seven Mukha Hijiva Do Swayam Eva Spuritiyada. What to speak of the senses being unable to perceive him? In fact, even the Vedic literatures cannot completely describe him. Therefore, not even the authoritative language of the Vedas can perfectly describe the absolute truth. Because the Vedas themselves say that the Supreme Lord cannot be understood by words alone. Devon Vedanta Sutra, the last one, Sabda Anubhita, Sabda Anubhita. The Supreme Lord is beyond all type of, he cannot be expressed by words. Therefore, finally the Shastra says he is Avachaniya. The Vedas say he cannot be under, he cannot be described by words because he is indescribable. Therefore, finally, the Vedas themselves say Nayati. Nayati. He is not this, he is not that. How we can completely describe him? Therefore, even though the Vedas try to give reference to the Supreme Lord directly and indirectly, still they cannot achieve complete, su complete success. Therefore, there is only one absolute truth. Those three modes of nature by which everything appears to be different from him is nothing else but his external illusory potency. Thus he is so unknowable that even the demigods cannot completely understand him. That supreme absolute truth is the source of all subtle and gross manifestations. But he is simultaneously transcendental to them because he is absolute. I mean, absolute means everything depends upon him for their existence, but Krishna does not depend upon anyone for his existence because he is called Swarat or Self-Manifest. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The purpose is that what is the Swarup of Bhagavan? Who is the root cause of whole universe? Srishti, Chiti and Pralaya. Also, you should know there are so many versatile deities in India. In Vedic literature, Puran, it has been told. Like sometimes Brahma, Shankar, sometimes Ganesh, sometimes Surya, sometimes Sakti, sometimes Narayan, sometimes Dwarkadhi, sometimes Brajesh Krishna. Oh, they are so different, different. What should we think? So he is telling that really who is Anadi Radhi Govinda Sarva Karan Karana. He is the root cause of everything. Brahma, Shankar, Indra and the others, only they are bhakta. Adhikarika devata for creation, to share creation like this. Narayan, uh, Nishinghadev, Varadev, Sri Ramchandra, not different of Krishna. Krishna is then Ete Chansa Kala Punsa Krishnastu Bhagavan Indriyar Ketma Lokam Mridyanti Krishna is Supreme Lords of Lords. He comes in the form of sometimes Ramchandra, Nishinga Dev, Kalki, Vaman, so many things. So, even Narayan is not, he is worshipable. Ram is worshipable. Nishing is worshipable. But, oh, Krishna comes in their forms. 
they are not their existence is not independent they depend on krishna also narayan cannot do ras missing her if ras is going missing he will go then all will <laughs> <laughs> Even Ramchandra cannot do. He is tightened in Valdi Sita, so anyone cannot do this. Anyone cannot take pick up feather, float Valdi Krishna. He can make ross. So Krishna is supremely. वदंति तत्त्व विदस्तत्वं यद् ज्ञानम् अद्वयम् ब्रह्मेति परमात्मेति भगवान् शक्ति मल्ली वन कृष्ण इज़ देयर भगवान् हिज एक्सटेंशन्स इज़ देयर हिज फॉर्म इज़ देयर ऑल क्वालिटीज़ आर देयर बट फ्रेंड वी विल सी बाय द नॉलेज विज़न ऑफ नॉलेज ओ ब्रह्म हो एंड फ्रेंड वी सी by Jog, then like Paramatma. And when we see by Bhakti, then with all attributes we see that Krishna is supreme head of all. Brahma is only the shadow or fulgence of the male nails only. And Paramatma only like this in heart, like Antaryani. So you must know that Supreme Vashatal Deity Bhagavat Tattva is Krishna. Then he told me, Oh, very good. I want to know that what is the purpose of Vedas? So many Rishis and Mahasri, they became what? Confused. What Vedas are telling? In Vedi it has been telling, they are telling that do sacrifice. Take the meat of horses and all other things which are sacrificed. And you should marry Grihast life. And then you can take wine. What is the department? <laughs> Who will? Can you? Oh, no, no. You ask me. Can you? <laughs> Swati Maharaj? <laughs> then you? Or uh, what name? Radha Kant Prabhu? Sir. Sir. Can you? Bhagavat? No try. If you will. No try. Timirandasya Giranjala Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilitam Jaina Tasmaya Shri Guru Vena Maha Guru Vey Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Talalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Paravaktaya Namo Maha I first of all offer my Dandavat Pranams unto my beloved Gurudev on Vishnu Park Paramahamsa Paragajika Chaja Asadav Tarasar Shishimar Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj and unto all the Jivanda Sanyasis and the Vaishnavas so the inquiry is being addressed to Avi Hotra Maharaj responds to Nemi Maharaj's question about the um, purport of the Vedic literature. There are many instructions throughout the Vedic literatures as to um, sakarm karma, nishkarm karma, etc. 
and Vikama. Vikama also. But it's described how in if we do activities wanting some result, this is Sakam, and the example is Dhruva Maharaj. So this is not the highest um, practice for our devotion. If we perform some act of devotion, but we're wanting some remuneration for it, then this is called Sakam. But Nishkam Karma Yoga is described as not wanting any remuneration for my um, effort. But still, this is not Shuddha Bhakti. Shuddha Bhakti is beyond Nishkam. In the um, stage of Nishkam Karma Yoga, the practitioner is thinking that this is my effort or this is my facility that I'm providing for the Lord. Whereas Shuddha Bhakti, he has the vision that's been previously described of seeing everything as the Lord's potency. So he's um, utilizing all the Lord's energy back again in the Lord's service. This is Shuddha Bhakti as compared to Nishkaram Karma Yoga. So these three types of yoga are discussed here. And um, it's saying here in this translation, childish and foolish people are attached to materialistic fruitive activities although the actual goal of life is to become free from such activities. Therefore, the Vedic injunctions indirectly lead one to the path of ultimate liberation by first prescribing fruitive religious activities. This is Sakam Karma Yoga. <clears throat> Just as a father promises his child candy so that the child will take his medicine. So the Vedic scriptures are designed for the conditioned soul to pull the conditioned soul to a spiritual transcendental state of consciousness. It's saying in the second canto, Bhagavan Brahma Karstena Tira Vikyasyamanasya Tad Avyaya Sakuteshto Ratir Atmanya Topavet. That Lord Brahma, he studied the Vedic scriptures three times scrutinizingly with his twelve heads. And the conclusion that he reached four heads, sorry, so twelve times. Twelve times with his four heads. So 12 times he studied the Vedic scriptures. And the conclusion he reached was Ratir Atmanya Tobavet. That attraction for Krishna is the ultimate goal of life. So the different regulations that were instructed through the Vedic scriptures bring us to the conclusion ultimately, as we just hear from Buddha Dhammada Maharaj, coming to the 10th canto of the beautiful smiling face of the Lord. So, and developing attraction for this personal aspect of the Lord, rather than performing various Vedic injunctions just to simply um, have some remuneration in this world. So Srila Gurudev began his lecture tonight by describing if someone is running very fast, um, but is um, with eyes closed even and slipping, that this is actually indicating the path of Raganuga, not this path of following the Vedic injunctions explicitly, but following the Vedic injunctions with the vision of m developing this attraction in the heart completely for Radha and Krishna. So this is the ultimate conclusion of the Shastra, to bring us to an attraction for Krishna. The next verse is saying, If an ignorant person who has not conquered the material senses does not adhere to the Vedic injunctions, certainly he will engage in sinful and irreligious activities. Thus his reward will be repeated birth and death. So for not following these instructions and injunctions, the um, system that the Lord has provided is Vanashram, the system where by our um, daily lives we can bring ourselves to focus completely on the Lord more and more through our activities, all of our activities to be focused on bringing pleasure to the Lord and as we've heard constantly throughout this Navi Yogendra Samvad that without the potency of Guru then none of this at all can actually manifest in the heart of the conditioned soul. The conditioned soul is a very beautiful example of um, 
firewood, that fire is always um, present in wood. And just as that potential is present in the jiva, but can't be ignited until another piece of wood, so to speak, comes in contact with that jiva. Similarly, the spiritual master, when he comes in contact with the conditioned soul, he can ignite the spiritual potency that's already dormant within the spirit soul. That he can understand this clearly, that he's not this conditioned body, that he actually is spirit soul. These 28 elements that we are residing in is not our true identity. So all these truths are being revealed by these personalities, the Nabha Yogendras. What is the purpose? You should again tell me clearly. <laughs> oh, my God, the Miranda Ganan Janasala Kaya. Chasurun militam ye Tasmai Sri Gurami Nama. First of all, Okarmai, thousands, thousands of its senses look as speak of Srila Guru Patput and all Vaishnu Sanyasis and mothers, sisters, and everyone, please accept me. So now, we hear so many kathas, nine races. This book, one one questions and answers. So they gave so many answers. There are now Gurudev Gevala. So anyone working in this world, what is we are doing? So everything called karma. By mind, by heart, by body. So we were working. But there has so many differences. Karma, akarma and bikarma. There are karma is sakam karma and niskam karma. Akarma and bikarma. Prohibited karma. So we are killing cows, animals, violence mode. This is prohibited karma. This is called bikarma. Akarma. Sometimes we have necessity this work, but that time we are not doing. This is called akarma. And sakam and niskam, when we have desire, material desire, selfish mood, selfish desire, and always we are working for ourselves. This is called sakam karma. When we have no any desires, only, only helping, working. So this, this is called Nishkam Karma. One side gain, other side Bhakti. When we are following Bhakti, we have no any selfish desire, no any one mood, no anything else. Only serve Him Sri Krishna, serve Him Guru Padma, no any desires. This mood, this is called Nishkam Karma Bhakti. Oh, this is called Nirguna Bhakti. Nirguna Bhakti. More and higher than this So other way, many persons, Gyan Yogis, they are following Gyan Yogis. They have no anything else, no any desire, so left all things. Then they are following work, karma. This is called Nishkam karma. So there are so many types of karma. Parucha vado vedoyam balanam anusasanam. So, Ved Shastra spoke, everyone must follow the karma. Without, everyone will be lazy and sleeping, not working. So, must follow the karma. But, don't go any material sense in your mood. Everyone follow me, then life will be successful. So, in this way, Ved Shastra spoke, and anyone doing work, but when they are offering whole work, whole energy, whole karma, then we will be successful, then we will be pure, like ghee. We are eating so much ghee, 
Then what happening? After that, so many problems come. Heart, first, heart problem, body problem, health problem, any kind of problems come. But if use medicines, with medicines it can give them no any problems. When we are working and for, for ourselves, then will be problem binders. So Sri Krishna told, when we are working for ourselves, for family life, then blindness, anything blindness come. Binding in ignorance, in falling, in maya. And when we are offering whole karma for Vishnu, for Sri Krishna, then no any blindness. No any blindness. Then everything will be free. Other way, so many persons sense in India, they are working, they are working bad habit, bad things, sense enjoying mood, they are laughing. Oh, sadhus come, they, they put white chandan in, this is white, so why he put and why he put this wooden, wooden stitch, so why he put? Oh, yeah, where from come your sadhus? They are not a great sadhu, so they are so false and cheater. They are laughing, joking and talking so many false. They are saying, oh, sense India is best life. Without sense India, how can live? And how can eat? So they are saying so many talks and many things. And give him bliss to any others. Oh, we are great person. We have so great knowledge. But everyone, so foolish persons, they worship to demigodes and they are killing cows, animals, violence, mood. In this way they are living, but life after life they are going hell. So they are very so best and see, so there was some spoke this thing. This is a good, good religion. Look at the way of me, some of the seva, nitta, ijam, torna, hita, tranodana. Bevastati stesu vivaha jagya suragrahe irasu nevrutti de rishta. Many persons, mostly people, they are uncontrolled sensi, uncontrolled mind. They are going so many girls and so many ladies. Then Bevastav gave rules. You must follow these rules, you should to marry. Married life you can follow one person and you can protect sharp to him, uh, her. Whole life live to, together. Don't divorce. So in this way, best they told you must live with one, only one lady. Then your senses, your heart, mind, everything will be controlled. And very soon renunciation is coming. Why I am going in marriage life? Why I am falling in family life? So this is blindness, one day, so everything, problems, headache. Then they want, oh God, give me shelter. That time they are praying. So it is here. So, Loki Vavaya Visa Madhya Seva. Anyone eating meat, fish, eggs, so many things, and drink, drinking wine, then best day. My rules, if you are, you want to eat fish, make a meat, then you can do fire sacrifice, then offer one animals, after then you can eat, otherwise not before, don't kill two animals. And Jadgrahana Vasta Bihita Suraya, Pasur Alavanam Nahinsa, in Bhagavatam prohibited, don't be violent. Don't kill animals and any others. So what can I do? What is process? Jat ghana bhakso vihita suraya. If one drinker, so always drink it, then how can I live? Then they are told, oh, you can take their smell. But don't, don't drink wine. <laughs> and other way, vasur alohanam. You can offer one animal to gods and demigods and demigods. But don't kill. Don't kill to animals. So this is the sadharma based religion. 
but anyone they don't know always killing cows animals and and going hells this life so they are killing many many animals next life they become animals so other persons are killing them in this way violence moods so killing each other fighting killing killing then going hells so this is the best religion external ill but not internal so in this way this is they spoke so many kathas after them Yes, explain very clearly all these things. But naturally, all beings they want to meet X, meet X, and to have to enjoy so many ladies or ladies also. Like to enjoy so many and so many things. So that's they were telling really what he told. Come from uh, property to liberty. Anyhow, don't <coughs> be with so many ladies. Be with one lady. This is also a Brahma Charja, and whole life you should be with her, save and protect her, and after that you should know the what is the fruit of this marriage. You should know. So Beth has not told to do marriage, coming. From prabhiti, this bhog to nibhti. If you married, then you should know the fruit of marriage. What? So many children will be there. You have to support, nourish, and that whole life you will have to invest in that. And when do you bhajan? So. Come in this process. That is why he has given order to men. So coming from pravritti to nibritti. In the same surapan, he told only you can take a smell, not taking. And what killing animals, not only sacrifice. What? Oh, for Krishna I am giving like this. Not killing. Also, he told, "Loki ki, badi ki, vap ja kriya kriya karte kriya kriya. Hari se manu kulla saay bhakti mitchata. What is badi ki rules and tantri ki like archan, pujan? This is tantri and badi ki." By the means what Upanishad has told, then by both bhiti rules and regulation, <coughs> you should worship to Aradhana of Supreme Lord Krishna and have a guru. If we have the glory of guru, without guru nothing, and then take initiation. Then take siksha hmm, from guru, sarp guru as your logic bandho, and then you can do worship of Krishna. This was the part. Now tomorrow you should be prepared for more three questions and answer all. I can ask any of you. Be prepared. <laughs> uh, oh, any fifth one. And after that drama, they should prepare for drama.